So here we go. Uh, we could just start right into the lower monastery. There's nothing to keep us from it, but there's these crabs. And immediately they turn hostile. That means this tutorial already showed us what neutral and hostile creatures are. They are yellow on the map at first, then they turn red, and they do that if you get close to them. I mean, anyone who played this game a bit knows that, but why? Well, we are taught right at the beginning. That's nice. It's seamless, it's not like some annoying pop-up heavy uh, tutorial style thing, but still it teaches a lot. So, um... You got it. If you're totally new, you would of course just run right into them and charge them. Alright, Leroy Jenkins and all. And um, usually that's fine with the party. But uh, if you make mistakes, especially regarding the formation, uh, those get punished. They do deal damage, these little buggers. So if your mage or psionic is up front, they can punish that and kill such a character relatively quickly. So that is the next thing they teach, just combat generally, just check it out and you can check what all the buttons do and stuff. And um, it punishes a few mistakes. And this formation thing is like the most unique element here, you could say. I mean, the movement is also a bit specific for wizardry. But um, most games don't really have this formation. This is like, I mean, it's from 2001, but this whole series is, of course, older. It's wizardry 8, after all. And you had a formation before as well, but you had like this uh, six character thing and the ones which were up front would be up front in your formation, so you had a different UI there. So the news is told, alright, tutorial succeeded. Uh, if you run into them solo, then they will just, will most definitely kill you. You could reload a bunch and hope for major luck, but at least on experts, well, you definitely need major luck to get those guys. Oh, it's a bit annoying here. Mm, playing somewhat out of focus, because I focus on what I say and on what I do at once, and it's not really the same thing here. Anyway, so these guys, even one of these crabs could kill me, and three are definitely too much for me to handle. So what I do and what these crabs really have told me in my very first solo is to outmaneuver them. I had never done that in my six-man games and even in my four-man game I pretty much charged at everything and I built good characters, I learned where to find some good stuff and that was all right, that was well enough to just beat the game. But not on a solo, and it taught me this, maneuvering. Uh, I'm not that good at it right now. Didn't really pay too much attention, but I think it should suffice anyway. And with maneuvering, if you do it right, you have enough to play through a solo. Especially, of course, a powerful one, if you start with a mage, well, it's still pretty hard. You see, uh, I drove them off, they retreat after a while, they yeah, first uh, charge at you, and if they realize, alright, that won't work, and charge three times without actually getting to you, or uh, hitting you at least, well, then they retreat for another three rounds and um, then they try to charge again but only for one round unless they actually reach you. If for some reason they attack you in between, so for instance if they retreat and I charge uh, and they are in combat distance then they will attack and if one hits then all of them will revert to charge. 
So there's certain mechanics, and I think, well, I can just say how it is, but uh, the way I like to play it is usually more like intuitive. I mean, I know some stuff, uh, like you when they it. retreat and when they don't and whatnot, but you that's it. it's just so much. How far can they actually run and, you know... I think it's not it. bad to just take it slowly, to just do it and um, develop a feeling for it. So that's why I got the spear, because it's extended range. So now it's awake and it runs away. It wouldn't do that if I would have attacked with a sword uh, in short range. But in this case the crab doesn't have extended range, it's not an attack range, so it retreats as it should at this point where it... Yet again I didn't really count. I think it will charge at me now. No, it will charge at me the round afterwards, whatever. No, it won't, because I attack it. Uh, if you attack it, or if they attack you... Well, no, if you attack them, they stay in uh, like the mode they are in, retreating or charging. Uh, if they attack you, they will always go for charge, of course. I'm really unfocused here, but uh, well, there's still some use to this little combat exercise here. I don't want to kill that one, I will need it later. I was so into maneuvering and fighting, I would almost have slain it by mistake. That would be an annoyance, a real annoyance, but I think it should be manageable. But could have taken a lot longer because I would have needed to wait for the right kind of crabs to respawn. So, um, these guys are far more powerful which is to say they are level 2 and these early levels really make a difference as in many games whether you are level 23 or 24 may not be a world of a difference but level 1 or 2 that's something else that's really big so these guys are even slower and um, <coughs> the others already fell KO after a while and these guys do too. So these crabs have relatively low hit points, relatively high damage for the level and uh, low speed, very low in this case uh, and uh, also low stamina. And all of that is deliberate. It's not like, I don't know, it's some, some generic level 1 monster, the stereotypical goblin variety or something. It's not like that. They are designed for tutorial purposes and they are very well designed. Because, you know, um, they have the high damage, so um, they won't just kill a fighter right off the bat. But you might, at least on expert, need a potion or, uh, well, at least the fighter up front or perhaps multiple people. Perhaps you need to change your formation in between so the injured guys uh, go to the second line, to the center or something. And that's only achieved because they actually have high damage. But on the other hand, they still are those level 1 guys, so they're not supposed to be all that hard to beat. So they have low hit points. The armor is okay, so uh, you get acquainted with the 
combat mechanics you don't yeah. always hit and sometimes you don't deal damage even if you hit I don't know what that armor actually is I could look that up didn't really do that you got it Fresh meat so their defense is basically what makes them those easy to beat guys usually but as soon as you go for a solo that won't do it's still way too much you just can't kill them fast it. enough they deal too much damage it's a major problem and then you can maneuver and no you know you I only ever did that when I played a solo I had played expert I had played a foreman I had played a bunch of stuff and I never learned that. And where do I learn that? In this tutorial. I learned it from the very first opponents of the game and that is what it really impressed me and why I believe this the best uh, tutorial, so to speak, that I ever saw in any role-playing game. You got it. Because I came here as an expert already. Oh, wait, that's a one crap. That's annoying. Uh, Yet again, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> At least I notice now. Anyway, I learned maneuvering after I had played for years. And that is not something I had with any other solo or uh, any other tutorial, I mean to say. It would teach me something as advanced. Oh, damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, we'll see how uh, easy it is to deal with that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about it. You we'll see. Ah, uh, and these guys make it even easier to outmaneuver them. So if you don't really know what you are even looking for, uh, now you will since you just see this video. But, um, you know... Um, uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just running away for a start. And then I realized this whole movement pattern and that they start to retreat and stuff like that. I really didn't know that before. It's not necessary for a normal game. And this area is designed so that you can kite them in circles or whatever you will. It's... Uh, large and open mostly but there's also cover so you can hide and stuff it's designed for this maneuvering here for the little crap dance in that i never did until very much later so um that's really the quality of certec games one has to say it's the same for jack the lions for instance that you realize after having played the game for what feels like half your life that well, that there's a lot more tricks that you can learn and you what you might believe some kind of exploit, some clever trick nobody came up with before. You got it. On second glance you realize Certec themselves have planned all these things, have carefully designed you all the it. grinding and power training opportunities and outmaneuvering and all that stuff. They designed stuff which well, in other games, just comes up as meta or something, you or as it. exploits and stuff. And put it in their tutorial. You got it. And you don't even realize there is a tutorial. Yeah, well. Yeah. It's really pretty much my ideal for game design. So, if anyone out there wants to make a role-playing game, I think that's lesson one, how to make a proper tutorial. I guess it should be done last. Once you know what your advanced mechanics even are and what you have to teach. Alright, mm, for my first solo I played a fighter. Well, I'm not saying it's the entirely right 
reason, but I did play the fighter because I had just figured out this uh, maneuvering thingy here, and stamina is the measure, basically. At least for you. I mean, these opponents go KO. Most other opponents will you not go KO that easily. But, well, you also expend stamina on attacks and everything you do. So, that's really the thing here. Maneuvering is stamina intense and if you run out of stamina, obviously you cannot run away anymore. So if you are amidst the retreat and the others are charging right now and oops, you go KO, that's it then. Also, you take double damage when KO'd. So I took the fighter due to that, because the fighter has stamina regeneration. Later on it's not really relevant and also it's just in combat as I see it. You cannot just run indefinitely anyway, which is possible with one point of stamina regeneration. But you regenerate a lot more stamina in between combat rounds if you just rest for a moment and do nothing. And that makes it a lot easier to maneuver. It really is like that. You can just wait when the enemy is retreating anyway. So now I just do nothing and I replenish 14 stamina. Other classes can just dream of those values. I mean I can also get unlucky and just get 4, but still it's a lot more on average. Of course I didn't just choose the fighter for the stamina regenera regeneration, I mean I love the fighter anyway, and we all know, or oh, well everyone who has played wizardry for a while knows, that fighters are a powerhouse in offense and defense, and in that solo I realized not having magic, well it's not the end of the world, in a solo you need a bishop to have all magic and otherwise you need to make do anyway and that works for most things really that's also one reason to play a vanilla character just one class so I played fighter and um, well fighters are very powerful alright I knew what I need Back then I uh, safe scummed my light sword and then had my super weapon. And um, I didn't feel that was like cheating but much more it was an achievement. I had to figure out how that even works. In that case you have to save before even entering the region where the light sword may be found. Uh, well, and I figured that all out and I did it and uh, I was happy my plan worked, but this time around that's just not an option. Yeah. And um, because I played a fighter I learned how to deal with not having certain magic, which would come in handy in all my later solos, because hardly any character has all the magic. So I learned that one thing and a few others, like how to get the light sword. And after that I played a fairy ninja. Alright, that's all very cheesy and all, but whatever. Then I had alchemy and uh, learned that. I learned how to grind it properly. In that case alchemy is really easy, but anyway. And you learn different stuff from each class, and if you have a multi-class character, this will be a true jack-of-all-trades, really. Not any jack-of-all-trades, it's specific, still, but um, still a jack-of-all-trades, and that means you will learn less from such a multi-class character, and usually it's not necessary. Uh, I wonder whether it's really necessary for an Iron Man solo, but it's definitely a huge boon. I really want every ounce of strength that I can find, which will result in many combats looking very easy and then you have that 3% chance to go KO and die to some random enemy. 
And, well, for those 3%, I need everything I can get. So, um, next little trick. So, if you do yo use that sinful multiclassing, which I just discouraged, which is very powerful though, then you might as well do it proper. So, I told you I want two attributes at maximum and the rest as low as possible, basically. Not quite as low as possible, but not high anyway. And now I have zero bonus points because I already distributed my points in dexterity and strength. Now I become rogue, I get three points in speed and senses, which I could have invested because, well, I have six points on level up. Only I did already, so I'm at minus six. Ah, uh, sorry for that. Uh, let's go on. So I made six points out of nothing. I will grind up stealth. I don't need to put points here. Uh, locks and traps. This, for instance, I learned that this time around from playing this Iron Man game. My first character didn't use that, but as soon as I needed it, I found it. So if you play a hard mode, which is kind of restricted and has certain restrictions, you will become much better at spotting such things. It wasn't really hard. I stumbled upon it almost immediately, but um, only after I played a multi-class Iron Man character. Well, anyway, so locks and traps. Uh, I will only have the opportunity le to level this up on this level as a rogue. I don't plan to bring it all that far, but every point helps, so I definitely want these three points more. And if I could, I would put all my points in it, I think, or perhaps not all, because I also want throwing and sling. Then six artifacts, as mentioned, for the light heal identification, and the rest can go into close combat. I made four points in pole arm, and uh, is that it? Or I think I had ten close combat, so I made one point there, is that right? I think that feels about right. Alright, so I didn't make too many points here so far on level one. On we go, level two, I'm a rogue. Wait, I would have thought that I gain another level immediately, but well, it's not like I need it, so that's fine. Hey, now I got census 50 which I needed to find Stand this stuff. There. I'd almost have forgotten. So, uh, actually that never happened. That really was unfocused to just kill the one crab I wanted to keep. Um, let's just hope that I get the right crabs, because it's, if it's the wrong ones I might have a problem. Oh, damn it. I think they won't come, simply because I am level 2 now. That's a major problem. But let's see, perhaps I get lucky somehow. I don't really know, though. I think it should just spawn level 2 crabs all the way. Or nothing. Wasn't there an enemy? Didn't I spot one? Wildlife over here. Oh. Level 2 crap. Hmm. Not sure that's a good idea. Line up oh my I'll god. Oh, down. I need to re-equip for a start. So I don't even have the speed. That's why I didn't level up. I forgot about one of them. Oh my, I play a bit weird here. Sorry for that. Um, well, we'll see. I just hope it works out. As mentioned, I did not have to tackle this problem before. Can I use this guy, I wonder? I think it should be pretty hard, but I will try. What I want to do now, and what I needed the level 1 crab for, was uh, stealth training. So usually I would of course do that on continuous, but I want to get a feel before I do that. Uh, well, that was just a few rounds and I immediately get crushed. Hmm. 
Well, perhaps I use this crab and um, it. it will take a lot longer because it hits me a lot more and I take more damage and all. So, um, because it will take longer, uh, there will also be spawns. And I just hope the right ones come up, but I should have done that while I was still on level 1. Uh, whoops. I may not strictly need the stealth training here, but usually I level up stealth really high already here, not to 100 to 70 usually. I would be perfectly fine with like, I don't know, 50 or 60 I guess. So in this case I really you want this it. this you crab to... oops. Alright. Uh, to use its stamina up because uh, with low stamina they will hit worse and that is rather it. welcome here you got it. You got it. let's see you um, got it. I've never trained stealth with a level 2 crab actually you got it. so let's see you um, got Come on, power yourself out. I think I can just leave it there and just wait. It will just run hence and forth here and there, whatever. And eventually it will go KO. But I should keep it inside, otherwise the fight just ends. You got it. You got it. And a fight ending at the wrong you time can be horrible. You got it. In terms of maneuvering. You got it. You got it. You got it. That will be an issue later. Or, well, it. I hope it won't be, but um, the it. small spiders are such an opponent, opponent you that you it. do not want to face because they have ranged combat. So as soon as they see you, they can also attack you, pretty much. And um, you don't want that, but then you do not want combat to end. So that is... <laughs> Kind of a tricky combination. Oh, damn it. Oh, it's way too much damage these guys deal. But at least it doesn't hit all that well. It doesn't seem to be much better than... Oh. And now I could be dead. No, I'm not. But that was lucky. Well, not that lucky, but could easily have been the end. Yeah, that's the other problem. I have such lowish hit points. I mean, this is pretty much the best I could get because I had you, you know level one gives double hit points twice the hit points you usually gain per level so it. those level one hit points really count for something had I just started rogue and would go for stealth training now it would be really problematic because I what could be hit like once and would need to retreat and um, that's another reason for picking the fighter first because well that's max hit points and you double them out so that one level initially makes a huge difference oh right that's not what I bargained for definitely not um, okay and now I don't have the spear so I don't really know what to make of this. Uh, I mean, I guess I can just fight this guy, but I don't want to... Oh, damn it. Alright, so... Let's go 
here so I just see how they approach. Oh damn it, that's way too fast. Two rounds, two hits. Can take one more and that's it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, but they retreat, so they are actually not an immediate problem, but still, it's really annoying. You got it. And I don't think I will get level 1 crabs back. Oh my, how will I deal with this? This could take ages, so I guess it will be better once I have more stealth. Perhaps it won't it. really hit me anymore, but even with level 1 crabs, that is kind of a thing. This hit point restriction that I can only train until I am somewhat low. Conservative measure would be to just go away once I fall below 10 hit points, but in this case, uh, it's not even that safe. Those guys do more damage, the level 2 crabs. But I cannot afford to just go away once I fall below, what, 15? And it's kind of ridiculous. There'd be no training time left, really. Okay. You got it. Fresh meat sighted. Screaming hell. Time to fight. All right. I think I will try to find a more permanent solution here. You got it. All these nine. You got it. And of course I would do that with maneuvering. Maneuvering is generally one of the most powerful abilities in almost all role playing games. Russian I mean that really only excludes those that do not allow tactical movement and uh, if you can move in combat it's almost always the most powerful thing you can do to do that proper, to have movement buffs, you speed buffs, whatever and all of a sudden you can kite enemies and outrun them don't need to kill them, can just pass or something like that works very often. So if you play a role-playing game you do not yet know and there's mobility skills you should always you check them out. It. Oh. You got it. That's the thing. You got it. Typically people look for, I don't know, uh, the most damage, the big sword or you got it. the fireball or whatever. And I love myself a fireball. No doubt about that, but the most powerful abilities are usually it. more like the utility stuff. Wild Typically you got it. movement, but can also be other stuff. kinds of buffs, and sometimes even debuffs, but debuffs are usually not as powerful, but you it varies. It. Eh. Damn them. Fresh meat sighted. There's no end to the you got it. Eh, now those are back. That's bad. 
but not really. It's just time consuming. Loading times here, but they're so slow. It really takes my mistakes you to allow them to close in. They shouldn't really be allowed to do that. You got it. And I can just chill here and let this one run closer to my resting place so I don't always run into those guys when searching for this one. That will not always work because these others also move even if I'm not in combat. I don't like this. Now I need to run away from this one and that might Fresh mean that sighted. next turn I have to run away from that one. It's all pretty annoying. Let's try it this way. You got it. Okay, that one is still retreating. Yet again I lost count. But better safe than sorry, as mentioned. I go more intuitive and you got it. as long as I stay defensive that's fine. I can just always consider the worst case and everything's fine. And now it came. You got it. Alright, I think I should enter combat relatively soon, but perhaps now that it already took so long I can you as well wait until this one goes KO wherever it is. Hard to spot actually here in the water. It's a bit weird. You could call it realistic in some way, I guess, but it's uh, <laughs> mostly annoying. You got it. Oh my, that's really a pity I slew that one level one crap. And was so uh, en passant, one could say. Staying in extended range while already fighting those. Oops, gone it is. You got it. But we'll see might not be the end of the world. I don't know, did I get any levels in the stealth? I have nine. Yes, I got plenty levels. How is that? It really goes up very fast. You got it. Come on, go KO. You got it. Yes. There we go. I find it a bit disturbing that these guys are still on my map. On my radar, I mean. But whatever. They're not in the combat, so Line em up and I'll fine. Cut em down. <laughs> all right, they can also <laughs> cause low damage. That's good to know. Oh, and this is really going well. Already. At what 14 was shield, wasn't it? Well, stealth already at 13. That's not bad. Would have imagined that it would be way worse than this. But with this crap just hitting so poorly, it's fine. I can do my training with this level 2 crap. Only that I will run the risk of suddenly dying, I guess. Not too much so, but uh, well, I gave, I gave that crab one such opportunity already to kill me with a lucky strike. I hope. 
hope I don't need to make it a habit, but actually I'm not so sure. Oh, and there's that. Here. What the heck? Why are they even here? Oh, it's more. All right, I thought it's a nine, but no, it's another seven crap squad. Uh, all right. And in this case, I really need to make sure that one crab doesn't flee, but all others do. <laughs> all right. Um, why not? You got it. Nice challenge. Uh, oh, did I just mess up? No, not quite. That is the right one. All right. Hmm. That's no good. Can't enter combat with the right one you without also drawing the wrong ones. But perhaps I can now. Let's see. Looks good. I'm just in combat with this one. So this one will go into charge mode after this, and I can draw it out while the others flee. Still. I have 16 level 2 crabs here. With the rogue I don't think I can kill them. The level 1 fighter, and most notably, the spear, I could. Uh, that's why I mentioned the quarter staff earlier. Where's my crab? Is this one? Yes. All right. You got it. Um, the quarter staff is well staff, and it has extended range, and that means you could use this uh, spear strategy I used earlier with any character. Only if that character has no access to pole arms, you would need to use the quarter staff, which has significantly lower damage. So that's really just I don't know uh, some make do solution. The spear is a really powerful weapon for a start, and well, the quarter staff is <laughs> very poor, but at least it has extended range. The other weapon the priest may have is a mace, depending on which weapon skill you, you level die. up at character creation. So you have to deliberately choose. I think the mace would be the default, I'm not sure. And the mace is also a great weapon for all those characters that simply cannot use swords or pole arms. Okay, I didn't get all that far here, but well, what can you do? Wearing them out really has quite an effect, I guess, but oh, that's so... Oh, it takes way too long, I don't want to do that every time. We'll see whether such drastic measures are really necessary. Uh, eventually I will learn sword, mace, pole arm. Line em up. You got it. And something ranged, I guess. You got it. Uh. But I won't really build on ranged, so I could probably skip on uh. that. Uh. Oh, damn it. Uh. 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 Oops. <laughs> 